Hi, everyone, and welcome to day six of optimizing your event business. And we are so excited to be with you today. Yes, uh, we are here with Lori Castillo, the creator of Mompreneur Planner. Um, we're thrilled because, you know, as we've been working through this week and trying to find ways to optimize, we've got nothing but ideas and inspiration. And so trying to boil that down into a plan is one of the hardest things. So if you don't know about the Mom Entrepreneur Planner, it's an all-encompassing notebook and planner designed with mom entrepreneurs in mind. Um, and so we can't wait to dive in. And of course, we'll start by learning a little bit more about Lori and then get into some of the juicy questions from the group. Uh, so Lori, why don't we start off by uh, if you'll tell us a little bit about yourself, your your background, maybe, and uh, and then your company. Yes. Well, hi. It's so nice to see you all, and thank you both for having me. I am so excited to share a little bit. It's um, it's much needed right now, and what you guys are doing has been amazing. So thank you. But um, again, my name is Lori Castillo. I um, am the owner of an online life celebration boutique called Gloria's Garden that I share with my two sisters. And um, on top of being a mom of two boys, I also created the Mom Entrepreneur Planner. So my life is pretty full. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a, a, hand, a handful of a lot of love. <laughs> yeah, and maybe share. I know I've heard um, a little bit about your your business before with your sisters and I know you had something before that that really inspired you to think about planning this um, and, and creating your business which has been very successful so you want to share more about your journey that that would be wonderful yeah so I've always been an entrepreneur at heart my parents have owned their own business now for over 43 years and just um, running a business and seeing it grow is so amazing and about 10 10 years ago, um, a friend of mine had approached me that he had an idea to start a plumbing company. And I helped him take that idea from just a dream to a seven figure company in the, in a, the course of just five years. And um, towards the end of that five years, my grandmother had passed away. And, you know, it was a hard time, but she was an avid gardener and I had this idea to create a little seed packet, a flower seed packet that we um, put her name on it and handed it out to all of the guests at her memorial services. And a few months later, I posted it on my personal Etsy page that I had just, I would throw random stuff on Etsy, just things that I, you know, I'm a crafter at heart too. So I would throw stuff up and um, that little seed packet just took off and being an operations manager at a plumbing company uh, with a one-year-old at home and trying to, you know, fulfill orders got tough. So my two sisters stepped in and that's how that company formed. And I basically took the blueprint of how I helped my friend build his company and why we were so successful. And I took that blueprint and put it onto my own company and have, have been able to since grow that company into a six-figure business working on working up my way to the seven figure hopefully wow. in the next few years and um from there you know being a mom it's tough but I've always been a planner and so you know coming up with something that worked for me was important and that's sort of how the idea of the mom entrepreneur planner started to form <laughs> oh that's so and wonderful. that's truly 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 amazing um I've had the opportunity to go to one of your planning classes, but um, part of why we actually are having the seven day challenge is so many of our colleagues and our friends are impacted by the coronavirus or COVID-19. And we really wanted to give back to them, connect them with some folks in our network to really help them through this. Um, getting through any type of challenge is hard, but it helps us know that we can be resilient. We were just hoping you would share with us um, maybe a challenging time or a situation that you've gone through um, and then just how you were able to be resilient um, in the midst of it. Yeah, of course, this is a trying time for everybody and for anybody to think that their feelings or emotions are not warranted, just sit back. Everybody's going through it. You're okay. Um, you know, I'm very fortunate and very humbled to 
not have had a lot of traumatic or really tough experiences in my life other than, you know, just the grind of trying to start a business. You know, I had two businesses early on that didn't work. But when I, when I think of this question, the biggest thing that comes to mind um, has nothing to do with business. It actually um, was my journey with infertility. And I spent a long time trying to get pregnant, my husband and I, and that was really, really tough. And a lot of times you feel like you're going through it alone because people don't talk about it. And um, once I realized that if I started sharing more, then people were coming out of the woodworks and they were dealing with the same issues too. So talking about it was really, really important. And another thing that came from that was um, I happened to run across a book called You Can Heal Your Life by, um, oh my goodness, I'm going to lose her name now. <laughs> it's called You Can Heal Your Life, and I'm going to have to, I'll remember her name in a second. But um, when I came across that book, she just talks about how powerful our minds are and how our minds can truly heal our life. And one of the techniques that she taught in the book was just, overcoming the lies that you tell yourself and believing in the truths. And once you believe in those truths, how you can make things come to fruition and basically manifest those things. And I know a lot of times if anybody has gone through it, um, people tell you, just stop trying, stop trying and it'll happen. And unfortunately, when you're, when you want to have a baby, it's really hard to stop trying. But instead of not trying, what I did was I started telling myself, the truth because I had, you know, issues with my health that were preventing us from getting pregnant. And I told myself, you're young, you're fertile, you know, there's no reason why you can't get pregnant. So every time I just started talking against the lies and that's sort of what helped, what I truly believed helped eventually help us get a, help get us pregnant. So, and now we have two. <laughs> that's wonderful. Um, yeah, that's great. Um, just really quickly, Mary um, typed in that the book is by Louise Hay. Is that the line? There you go. Yes. Okay. That, and I talk about her all the time. So I'm like, why am I having a name link? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a great one. I wrote it down. Um, thank you for sharing. Uh, there's a, a book called The Untethered Soul that I read um, maybe a couple of years ago. And it has a similar mindset type of a discussion around the, um, it's not the lies you tell yourself, but it's that voice inside that sometimes we think is our own voice, but it's really this negativity and um, really figuring out what is your, what's in your soul and who you are and versus that voice that can sometimes lead you astray or, or, or not be so nice to you. Um, that's really important. So thank you for sharing that. I think that that's, a uh, great lesson that we can all take and learn, uh, not just from, you know, the fertility aspect. So thank you for sharing that. Um, but also whatever's going on in our lives right now and some of the, the discouraging things that we see and what are the truths, you know, so. Well, it's helped me with so much more. It's once I got past that, it now has helped me even in my own fears with business and yeah. starting on my own and taking it to the next level and the, the, fears that I project out and how now I'm able to talk back to those fears and say, you know, nope, this is the truth. <laughs> yeah. So, that, you know, just learning that and putting it into play has helped tremendously. We love that. So talking about your business, um, we're big fans of the Mompreneur Planner. We both have ours here. We can <laughs> showcase our little our show and tell. Um, but when, like, how did you come up with the idea from the mom entrepreneur planner and you know tell us about that journey yeah of course and thank you guys so much i love that you guys are such supporters of it and i appreciate it more than anything <laughs> it looks very basic but it, it is anything but that um it started you know like i said which is i've always been a planner and i would use so many different notebooks and planners and you know every time i'd go to a conference i'd take an a plain notebook with me or, you know, I dive into and buy so many planners um, and all of them have amazing aspects to them, but none of them suited what I really needed, which was something that I wanted to carry everything all at once. I wanted my daily planner. I wanted my 
notes that I would, you know, if I was reading a book, I wanted to have my book notes with me. I wanted to have my passwords with me. I wanted to have everything all in one. And I couldn't find anything like that. And the closest thing that I had found was, it's called the Happy Planner, which I know a lot of people are familiar with. And I liked it because it had this disc bound system. And so my mother-in-law, who is a, um, you know, self-proclaimed planner addict, I had asked her, you can you just put a notebook together? I just want dividers and notebook pages. And that's all I want. And she did that for me for my birthday one year. And I started using it and I was like, okay, I'm getting closer. And, um, with a bit of graphic design experience that I have in my background, self-taught, um, I started just one by one designing the pages, how I wanted them to be. And eventually it, I finished it and I printed it and, um, I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> I started showing my, you know, mom entrepreneur friends because it, you know, our lives are so crazy because it's not just the business, but we have our personal lives with our spouses, the kids and, you know, taking care of the house and all of those things and having it all in one was just awesome to me. And when I would show my mom entrepreneur friends, they were like, make me one, print me one to print it at home. It was like 60 bucks a pop. So my husband and I were like, okay, let's take a pretty big chunk of our savings and let's get it mass printed. And we did. And it was a crazy experience because we couldn't find anybody in the U S that would do the discount system. So we had to do it overseas, which was a very awesome <laughs> experience. Um, but we did it. And ever since then, you know, it's evolved now. And what started as the planner became a vehicle for me to just step out, um, and create a community more of women who are mom entrepreneurs who are, you know, just need a little motivation or, you know, help. And with my background in building businesses, it's just, it's given me a new platform that I'm really, really enjoying. And I don't take a minute of it for granted. I really appreciate everyone who's followed along and I'm, I'm trying to put out a little bit more to, to help everyone right now. To actually sit down and plan your day or your week or your month or your year, um, your planner, it takes time to actually do it. And I think for some people, it might be a little intimidating. Um, I think the way that your planner is laid out is fairly easy for people to follow. But how do you, you know, encourage women who feel like they're too busy or they're not planners that they could actually make this work for them? Yeah. So... It is. It's a lot. It is a lot. And what I always say is, you know, you have to make the time in order to start. You know, everybody complains, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. And I'm over here shouting, it's not time, it's priorities. Um, so the first thing that I tell so many women is that number one, get your priorities in order. And once you're able to prioritize the fact that you need to plan, <laughs> then it then it becomes, you know, something that you make a habit of and you're able to sit down and it's making the time. When something is a priority, you'll make the time for it. And when you make the time for it, then you can sit down and, you know, force yourself to really lay your, your goals and your plans out on paper. And that's how, you know, there is a system behind it. So usually when I have my, um, like Iris, you attended our vision planning session. I, I explained that system and it's part of the series that I'm starting to put out right now is how you can use the planner to help you or walk you through that system. <laughs> One of the things that you went over, which I thought was really great, was how to actually set goals. Um, and I know you were using kind of like the smart goal model. So, you know, walk us through um, briefly, like how, what's the best way to actually set goals and be, and hold yourself accountable? Yeah. So everything starts with a vision. You have to have your vision set first and your vision is that those big dreams. And I always say, sit down with a white piece of paper and just, um, you know, in the planner, I have vision boards set out in the front of it. Um, and just dream big. I always say dream big cowgirl, like get it all out there. What are your wildest dreams? Like if you could make anything happen in the next few years, what would you make happen? So laying out your vision, creating a vision board, putting that vision board everywhere. I don't just have my vision board in my planner. I have it in my bedroom. I have it in my office. Um, 
taking that vision and extracting goals from each of those vision items. So you turn each of those vision items into at least two to four goals. And those goals, like you mentioned, um, if you make them smart goals, or I actually, I'm an overachiever, so I like to say smarter goals, ER at the end, um, because they're not um, just smart goals, they're also ethical and written and um, are recorded, I should say. Um, because it has been proven that when you actually physically write down um, your plans, your goals, it makes it so much more likely for you to achieve them. And um, not just writing them down, but sharing them with somebody that can hold you accountable. So for myself, it's my husband. Um, he also owns his own business. So we all, we both share with each other our business goals. And then we have our life goals, our personal goals together. And every quarter, him and I will drop, at, you know, at the time it was just our one son off with my mom and take a one day trip somewhere, one day overnight trip. And we would lock ourselves in a hotel room and just plan out our vision. And, you know, every, like I said, every quarter we go back and we, re we revisit it because in a quarter things can change. And if we're all looking at the time that we're in right now, in the course of a month, things can change so drastically. So, <laughs> you know, it's important to take those goals and, you know, make sure that you're revisiting your vision board and your goals. And then to take it one step further is taking those goals and sort of doing a brain dump and you write down every single action item that can come to mind that can help you achieve those goals. And when you write down every single action item, it sort of becomes like a bullet point to-do list. And then it's just a matter of check, check, check. You know, you're just checking items off the list after that. And so, like I said, if you start with that vision and you just break it down until you get to those action items, after that, you know, you have your accountability partner and you know exactly where your plan is going and what to do. And the path might change, but as long as you keep your vision in line, you'll get there. We have a question online that says, is there a digital version of the planner? Ah, so <laughs> <laughs> one of my biggest goals for 2020 was to put out a, a digital planner and um, my son, who is now three months old, born on December 31st of all days, <laughs> put a little bit of a wrench in those plans. But for 2021, yes, we will have an actual digital planner ready and available. And if I can help it, I'm not making any promises, but we might have one for um, the second half of this year. But being a new mom, it's, you know, I don't make any promises. I just <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> but yes, that is in the works. <laughs> Very cool. You need beta testers. We'll yeah. You <laughs> right. You know, we work with a lot of small businesses um, and of course in the event space in particular. Um, so are the, is there anything that you're seeing that's working or that has worked for folks in the event, in the event businesses to stay organized or to help them to uh, keep up with their goals? Yeah. So, um, something that neither of you know, Patty or Iris, is that I actually was an event planner. Oh. And I did it for about five years. I started my own business. And nice. It, you know, I love, I'm a planner at heart. So planning events is just another thing that just, you know, makes my heart beat. And I loved, I loved doing it. I planned quite a few weddings and it, it just was so fun to me. But trying to start a family and those type of things and then jumping in to help my friend with his business. It was one of the things that got put on hold. But um, when it comes to this industry, you know, when I was doing it and this was like pre Pinterest era, <laughs> it gives you a time frame. Um, you know, I would make sure that I had a separate binder for each of my events. Um, now I've, I've heard that there's software, you know, that you can purchase this event planning software. But for a lot of people who aren't, um, you know, looking towards purchasing or investing in software like that, utilizing technology like Google Docs and creating those type of, you know, digital binders to help you organize and plan, um, you know, for each event that you're doing or team management software. Um, like I've used Asana, but I think there's also a few others that are out there that can really help you, especially if you have a bigger team or you're putting together multiple events at once, those type of things can really help. But 
always, no matter what, and this, you know, the process of vision planning and goal setting and creating those action items, it can be um, modeled into any, any, you know, industry, I think. And the same thing with the event planning industry, you, you start with that big vision, what is this event going to look like? And breaking that down. So whether you're using technology or you're creating, you know, a manual binder, whichever way to stay organized, um, you know, starting with that vision and breaking it down is, is still the key. I knew something was in your background because when I attended <laughs> your event, every single detail and every single moment was planned out and only a planner can do that. <laughs> Yeah. I was very impressed. <laughs> and that, that event that you attended actually with my good friend, Anna, um, that event we pulled off in a month, which was crazy. Even to me, it was crazy um, because we just, we just clicked. I mean, I met Anna maybe two years ago and then we had not never really connected. And then the month before that, we both were invited to speak at an event in Texas and on the plane, we were just ideas flowing and it's like, let's just do it. Why not? <laughs> and so if you're organized, you know, even the biggest event or the smallest event, you can definitely pull it off on any time frame. Yep. Yes. That's so true. <laughs> <laughs> How do you, I know you mentioned you meet with your husband quarterly to dive into, you know, how you did. Um, but on a more granular level, how do you hold yourself accountable? And how do you, what advice do you give folks to do on a weekly or daily or, you know, whatever frequency basis to, to plan and then, you know, check in and make sure that they're keeping up with their goals? Yeah. Um, setting a hard, you know, a hard date and making the time again, it's priorities, you have to make it a priority. And once you make it a priority and you set the time to do it, um, doing this annually, you know, a lot of times people do it right before January 1st because it's just that, you know, that one hard reset date that all of us follow. But um, yesterday I just shared a video too. Right now is a great time to restart, reevaluate and restart because we're at the start of a new quarter. So really you can do this anytime, but, um, and once annually to go over that big vision, those big, you know, the grand scheme of things, and then your goals and your action items. And then quarterly having that check-in with your accountability partner to make sure that you're still on track for those things or what has changed. Obviously right now, all of us got thrust into <laughs> a really crazy situation and a lot has changed, especially if you're anything like, I know both of yourselves and myself, you have kids at home and you're trying to get your work done and do all this stuff for your business and homeschool and clean the house and get snacks every five minutes. Um, <laughs> but, you know, having that quarterly meeting and then even taking it a step further every month as um, both of you have actually um, have attended what I used to call my wine and plan events where once a month I would give myself, I would make the time here has been, you have the, you know, the kids and this is my day to take the time to plan out my month. And I made that a priority every single month. The last Thursday of every month was my date to, you know, set up my plan for the following month. What's going on? What do we have? What birthdays, you know, what events, meetings, anything like that. And then, um, weekly, I mean, you have to be consistent and break this down And every week on Sunday. I have my little routine, you know, in the morning, I do my um, meal planning, I do all I've always done my grocery shopping online. So this situation hasn't changed that any. Um, <laughs> but um, my meal planning, my grocery shopping, planning out my entire week. Um, and I also do my gratitude journal journaling on Sundays as well. And um, every night. So again, it's just taking that big grand scheme of things and breaking it down into these smaller chunks that makes it easier. Um, every night I look at the next day and say, okay, what do I have? And I think we've talked about this before, but always looking at the, the biggest, hairiest item that you have on that list and saying, okay, I'm going to do this first. We call it eat the frog. There's a book about it. And it's, you know, do the hardest thing first because then it'll make the rest of the day easier. <laughs> and if you do that every day, it just, it helps you get a lot more done. Um, but the very, very bottom line, no matter what, is always just giving yourself grace for what you don't get done. Because a lot of us put that 
really big pressure on ourselves um, to get it all done and you know set unrealistic expectations and when we don't get it done we're so hard on ourselves i mean we just kick ourselves in the butt so at the end of the day giving ourselves grace is important too it seems like um you have great discipline would you say like that um attributes to how you're able to kind of just stay consistent um and then not having discipline may be one of the biggest hindrance why people can't um, be consistent in setting and achieving their goals or is there something else you would say? Yeah. I mean, um, we all fall off, you know, even myself, you know, there's some weekends where Sunday we might have something planned and I'm like, Oh man, I didn't get anything done. And so just making sure that you're able to tell yourself, okay, don't beat yourself up. And tomorrow's a new day. Do all of those things that you normally do on Sunday tomorrow and you're fine. Um, I know a lot of people when it comes to planning for weeks, you don't even open your planner because you're just so busy or wrapped up in and you just don't want to look at it for a couple weeks because you know you can't get to any of that stuff. And I'm no different. You know, there are weeks where I won't look at my planner for a week and then I jump back on and I'm like, okay, back to it. We have to get back to it. Life happens. And um, when you talk about discipline, I think just being a product of my parents who own their own business for so long, um, they worked from home and they, you know, every day they got up and got ready and they, they didn't, they never worked in their pajamas or, you know, they never did that. And so having that discipline to be able to work from home and still show up every day. Um, I know I get a lot of that from them, but like I said, we all fall off a little bit. And as long as you do have that discipline to jump back on, that's what's most important. That's great. And that's also why I like the planner because, because it's that this system, you could take stuff in or out. So if you miss a week, the planner was, it has to be disc bound. And when we couldn't find anybody in the U S to make them, my husband's like, why can't we just do spiral bound? Or why can't we just do like hard bound? And I'm like, Nope, I'm no. not. That's the one thing I will not break from was that it's, the disc bound system that you can just pull things in and out or change the order or, you know, sort of make it your own. Cause a lot of sections, some people don't even use and it's like, take it out. I, yeah, that's fine. You could do whatever you want. So yeah, that was my number one. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. It was really fun to kind of go through and figure out what is, what, what do I need? And then, you know, what can I leave out so that I've got enough space? Um, and then you're right, make it your own. So we have our own little technique. I think Iris and I both use ours differently. But one of the things, yeah, I was going to say one of the things I just love about a planner in general and writing stuff down is crossing stuff off. Like it's the best feeling to like. Sometimes you just write something on there just so you can cross I it I do. Off. I'm like, I didn't write it down and I did it. I'm writing it down and I'm going to cross it off. <laughs> it feels really good to be able to get stuff done. Um, or so, yeah. <laughs> it's great. Definitely. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> so we have a couple more questions, but I know we're kind of closing in at the end of our time. Sure. Um, what, what's a message that you have for businesses? I know we, you touched on it a little bit, but right now during these times, you know, what are your thoughts? And, um, you know, we've got, yes, we have time, but we've got a lot of other things that are on our, our plate as well. Um, do you have any techniques or tactics or anything you want folks to try um, as they're planning and trying to go into execution mode. Um, but given our current circumstances, they look a little bit different. Yeah, I think, you know, this is a learning something new for all of us, even myself. And, you know, my son is in kindergarten. So having him home and having to homeschool him where it's not as easy to be like, here's your studies, go and do them. I have to sit there with him and physically go through the lessons with him and um, you know, it, it's, it's difficult. And I think the number one thing that I've learned since we started, I know a lot of people are saying today's like day two of virtual learning for us. We've been at it for two weeks now, um, in our school district. So the first week was so hard because I was that like bright eyed, bushy tailed, the planner in me, you know, we're going to do this from eight 30 to nine 30 and this from nine 30 to 10 30. And I have a newborn at home as well. My husband is an essential worker, so he still has to go out. Um, those hard time frames do not work. 
it's just having that list of items that you, you know, you have to do, but knowing that you don't absolutely have to do them today <laughs> and just going by that fact. And if you can just try your best to get to them. And there's some days where even I am just, I feel defeated. Um, and at the end of the day, instead of trying to do anything, I just, you know what, I'm going to go to sleep and tomorrow I'll start over, but definitely not having hard time frames. What I ended up doing with my son is I just started writing down all of the things that have to get done throughout the day for his schoolwork, breaking it into like 30, 20 to 30 minute sections of schoolwork stuff, as well as like 30 minutes of exercise in the morning and 30 minutes of exercise and writing them all on strips of paper, putting them on our refrigerator. And then I let him pick, I say, what do you want to do first? And he picks, and there's even like one hour of free time, 30 minutes of play by yourself time, 30 minutes of read by yourself time. And those by yourself time is my time to work as long as the baby cooperates, but <laughs> it's my time to sit and like get something done. Um, but definitely not having those rigid, rigid time frames has been the biggest um, savior for me because at first when we started, that was like my, my five-year-old told me no real quick. <laughs> So now it's a little bit easier that he just picks what he wants to do. And as long as we get it done at some point during the day, you know, I told my sister this today, I said, whose time are we on? You know, like if we get it done at 10 o'clock at night, who's, you know, who's going to yell at us. So just not having those rigid time frames and just doing what you can when you, when you want. So. <laughs> yeah, I was, I am totally in the same boat as you. Like you started off like, this is what we're going to do, you know, I'm mommy teacher and, you know, and then you start to realize also like what motivates them. You learn a little bit more about them and how they like to learn. So it's a learning process and a bonding process all at the same time. Yeah, Yeah, I agree. I agree. We're having some fun too. He loves, um, I have on there 30 minutes of creative play, 30 minutes of you know, brain play. And he, I found that he loves to draw. I, something I yeah. he loves to draw. So I'm like, okay, I can make this work. And that was something I learned. And, you know, we've had fun too. One of the things I think that really made me almost teary eyed yesterday was I taught him how to snap the other day and I thought it was just something funny. And then yesterday he tells me like all of the things that he's learned in this time that mom taught him. And I was like, yeah. oh, I learned how to snap and I learned how to do something else. And funny story for another time. He's like, and I can eat chili dogs now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I made chili dogs and he was like, no. And I was like, just try it. And so it's just all the funny things he's learned from mom this week. <laughs> That's super cool. Um, there's this website, um, this YouTube channel called Storytime Online. And so it's where you, okay, where the celebrities are reading the books. My kids love that. So I'm like, that's their quiet time. Part of that quiet time as well, where you don't feel guilty. Exactly. (laughs) Educational, but they're just doing it themselves. His drawing or um, thing is from a YouTube that his school sent to us, actually. It's a YouTube video with a, um, a gentleman, and I believe it's his son, teaching you how to draw. And it's drawing everything from like bunnies and umbrellas to like Mario characters and that's what he's super into right now. So he's, yeah, love that it. one is really fun too. Super <laughs> awesome. You guys, are, you guys have just created your own Montessori school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the child loves. So that's perfect. And I like your sticky note idea. I think I'll do that for dinner and I'll let my husband like, all right, you pick tonight. <laughs> that's your turn. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, this has been really helpful and informative. Um, I, I think that uh, especially, you know, there's the techniques, there's the things that work. And then, you know, we've got a cer- special circumstances right now that help. We, we're just in a different time. And so we can try to squeeze them in when we can and still feel like we're accomplishing things and pushing forward. Then, then that's all we can ask for. So I think that's awesome. Yeah. And just doing what works for you. I know, For me, like I said, I went through many planners before I decided to create my own. And when um, I talk to women, I always say, I do not judge you if you don't use my planner. Like use what works for you, find what works for you, which is most important. And that was my journey was just trying to find what worked for me. So So cool. And you can find the Mompreneur Planner online at 
Is it entrepreneurplanner.com? Yes. Yeah. So it's like entrepreneur, but instead of the E-N, just mom. Um, entrepreneurplanner.com. And right now I um, am starting my Momtrepreneur Monday series. So again, my planner has become a vehicle for so much that I'm so grateful for. And every Monday on Instagram and Facebook, I'm dropping my Momtrepreneur and Planner series of videos, which um, next Monday is going to be about marketing. So um, for your small business, and I hope to help a lot of people with that. That is so cool. Um, we'll definitely be watching that because that sounds right up our alley. Um, and then for those of you that have watched on live on Facebook, um, we will be giving out um, a gift from Lori's favorite business, Shop Honey and Rose, with your lovely t-shirts. Um, and just because we really want you guys to dive in and figure this out for yourselves too, we'll also, we'll, we'll also give out a Mompreneur Planner. Well, I was just going to offer that. So oh. awesome. an entrepreneur planner, and you guys can give that away to one of your awesome. Oh, that is <laughs> amazing. Thank you so much. Well, well, we'll figure out a way to, we'll, we'll yeah. pay for the shipping and everything. So don't worry. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think um, everyone can really benefit from, to your point, whatever works for you, but this is a great system. And so we just really hope that you guys have uh, the tools that you need to, to really, um, achieve your goals and your dreams. So that's, that's what it's all about. So awesome. Well, thanks again. Any last words, Iris? Um, thank you. <laughs> this was amazing. Um, you are so appreciated. Definitely appreciate all the nuggets you shared and just being so open with our audience. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you. All right. Well, we'll see you online. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye.